Wow, what a beautiful day. Thank you. And thank you for coming. So I'm here on behalf of the on behalf of the Trump campaign as an attorney for for the president to describe to you the first part of a situation that is extremely extremely troubling first of all for the state of Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and then for a num number of other states and the, these these uh, lawsuits will be brought starting on Monday but the first time it was discovered was here in Pennsylvania just a couple of days ago uh, the people you st see behind me are just a few of about I'd say 50 to 60 poll watchers who will all testify that they were uniformly will wait that they were uniformly uh, de deprived of their right to inspect any single part of the mail-in ballots. As you know from the very beginning, the mail-in ballots were a source of some degree of skepticism, if not a lot of skepticism, as being innately prone to fraud. The New York Times had uh, written that 10 years ago under other circumstances, but of course changed their mind once it was a situation involving uh, Pre President Trump. Um, Congress, Congresswoman Jordan, in her vast and compendious review of various forms of voter fraud, cited mail-in ballots as the most prone to fraud. With all that, you would have expected there'd be a high degree of security and a high degree of inspection that would be provided for mail-in ballots. Instead, in the wisdom of the uh, officials, de Democrat officials here in a city that's been Democrat for 60 years and has a very long history of voter fraud, documented history of voter fraud, uh, instead of going to a high degree of care to allow inspections of the mail-in ballots, there was no inspection of a single mail-in ballot. Those mail-in ballots could have been for anybody. Those mail-in ballots could have been for anybody they wrote in. Those mail-in ballots could have been written the day before by the Democratic Party hacks that were all over the convention center. What I'm saying to you is not a single one was inspected as the law required. Even when a court order was obtained to allow the Republican inspectors to get six feet closer, they moved the people counting the ballots six further feet away. It's really simple. If you have nothing to hide with these mail-in ballots, you allow inspection. I mean, this is common knowledge, common practice in the examination of absentee ballots, which happens all the time. You take out the absentee ballot, you open it up, the Republican looks at it, the Democrat looks at it. If nobody objects, you put it in the pile. If either objects, you put it aside. That's what's done for absentee ballots, which have the extra security of having signatures you can match. Here, which a much more insecure method of voting, no Republican got a chance to look at that ballot. Some of the ballots you will see look suspicious. From very far away, they look like same pen, possibly, possibly same handwriting. We can't say that because we never got to see it. And now, you're also going to find that way across on the other, other side of the state, there is a similar situation in Pittsburgh involving 300,000 ballots that were uninspected, unreviewed, not observed by a single Republican. Not a single one. It's got to be a pattern. As a friend of mine says, I don't believe in conspiracies, but I also don't believe in coincidences. Kind of funny that all Republicans were rejected here, and all Republicans were rejected in Pittsburgh, and it amounts to about, gee, just about the 700,000 votes that President Trump was ahead by two days ago that disappeared. 
And we have no way of knowing, because we've been deprived of the right to inspect, if, if a single one of those ballots is legitimate. That is unheard of. It's illegal. It's unconstitutional. And we will be bringing an action challenging that. And I emphasize to you, it's only one of the many other infirmities in this election. I know this city has a sad history of voter fraud. After all, Joe Frazier is still voting here. Kind of hard since he died five years ago, but Joe continues to vote. If I recall correctly, Joe was a Republican, so maybe I shouldn't complain. But we should go see if Joe is voting Republican or Democrat now from the grave. Also, Will Smith's father has voted here twice since he died. I don't know how he votes because his vote is secret. In Philadelphia, they keep the votes of dead people secret. At least that is something that you can be commended for. I'm not attacking the people of Philadelphia. I'm attacking a decrepit democratic machine, which has a lot of other reasons to be attacked. It's been around for 65 years. You keep electing the same people. The city gets no better. The crime goes way through the roof. The riots you have, the police stand by and watch it, not because of the police, because you have a mayor that lets them stand by and watch it. You got a district attorney who lets people go free. You are poorly served, ladies and gentlemen, of Philadelphia. And then you got a political machine. <laughs> Mayors, mayors who let riots take place, district attorneys who set criminals free, I don't think they're going to care much about ballot fraud. This is outrageous. An enormously important contest with a very, very suspect method of voting. There was no security. Zero. The people of this city, people of this country, have no assurance at all that those ballots were actually cast that would have to have been almost unanimously cast for Joe Biden in order to catch up. And let me have one or two of the people, let me emphasize this is only two or three of about 50 people so far that have given us statements, affidavits, recordings. We're going to have many, many witnesses. It's not a small case. It can be a big case, but I wanted you to get the flavor of it here in Philadelphia because we also have to alert the people of Pittsburgh that the same fraud was done to them as here. And I'll also add, same thing was done in Georgia. The same thing was done in Michigan. The same thing was done in North Carolina. Seems to me somebody from the Democratic National Committee sent out a little note that said, don't let the Republicans look at those mail-in ballots, at least not in the big Democratic hack cities that we control. We've done a lot to destroy those cities, and now we're going to destroy their right to vote. So let's start off first. My friend, you just tell briefly what happened to you, who you are, and what happened to you like you described it uh, before? I am Daryl Brooks. I am Philadelphia. Uh, okay. Take okay. your mask if you need. Take your mask off. Okay, take it off. Take your mask off. Uh, Daryl Brooks, uh, Philadelphia resident. Uh, for here for about two years. Uh, I come out here to support our president. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to be on the, um, uh, go to the poll, the watch. Um, a lot of us were excited about the president winning a second term. And a lot of individuals, African Americans in, in Philadelphia, were especially men, were talking about the 401k plan and how they were excited um, because their finances. So when I go to the poll, it was um, basically uh, they put us at 20 feet away, and uh, they said no cameras, no phones, can't take, you cannot take pictures. Uh, I was even harassed by some of the Democratic Party uh, poll watchers, and that is also recorded. And then. Um, Next thing you know, it was six feet away, and they still would not allow us, allow us to see anything that was happening. Uh, we saw people working on, on the ballots, but we didn't know any names. We didn't see anything. We don't know if people voted uh, twice or three times. We didn't know if people were dead people were voting. But we were there, and we were watching, and uh, it's such a shame. This is a democracy, Philadelphia, 
and they did not allow us to see anything and uh, was it corrupt or not. But give us the opportunity as poll watchers to, to view all the documents, all the ballots. And um, listen, you know, we just want a fair election. And uh, we viewed us, we viewed that it was not fair at all. It was not fair to allow us to, it could allow us to look at the, um, the ballots, some ballots, but nothing. It was, we were kept away from everything. Thank you. Hello, I'm Matt Silver. Uh, I st went for 16 hours straight poll watching. Uh, it took about 30, 45 minutes to get through, despite me having credentials of all possible manner. Uh, eventually somebody, I showed an email proving that I was supposed to go in, they at least let me through. Uh, when I was there, I was turned away for a tablet. They did not want any tablets or computers there. I had to bring that elsewhere. Eventually when I was let through, you were not able to get anywhere near the ballots. There were three rows of people counting ballots. The closest may have, at my day, may have been 15 feet away. Then there was another row, then there was another row. Uh, to the extent that you could see anything, we were told repeatedly, including by Democratic poll watchers, including by police, that if they see us taking a photograph or a video, we'll be thrown out and not let back in. The only place you could use a phone was several hundred feet away from the ballots. I don't know what they were trying to protect. When I was there, I saw some people looking at the ballots legitimately. Some people were flipping through them at a rate of every, few, every second or so in a way that we specifically could not even see a th single thing. Uh, to the extent that you could see a thing in certain boxes, I saw they seemed to be, at least certain boxes, seemed to be in the same unusual pen and seemed to have very similar handwriting. Some boxes were normal, some boxes were like that. When they finished with d so going through boxes, they put them in the very, very back of the room where you couldn't see a thing hundreds of feet away. Then they put, the, put supposedly the same boxes, I can't tell if they are or are not, through separate machines where they strip the ballots, the outer, outer casing with people's signatures to the privacy ballot. At that point, the actual signatures are completely separate from the privacy ballot and you can't, and they'll never be able to be tracked back. What I saw was disturbing and the process seemed to be specifically so we could not observe and also so we could not challenge. The only way to challenge something was to call an individual called Seth, who was in the back of the room, who could speak to people. And again, they were very worried about photographs and videos. How were you chosen? I was asked both by my local ward and the Republican National Lawyers Association. I responded to both. I was willing to do so. There was some type of vetting process, including my bar number, and I guess my credentials, and then I was accepted. And you're an attorney, right? I am an attorney. Where did you file a complaint initially? When you saw this behavior happen, what did you do? I asked the individuals in, in the group who were the most senior, and again, I... We'll, 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 we'll take questions later. Uh, when, when you move six feet closer, as far as you knew, was that uh, as based on a court order? I assume it was a court order. In no case was I closer than 15 feet to anyone what, counting. Did they move six feet further away? The closest row for me was 15, 20 feet away. Then there was another row 15, 20 feet beyond that counting, then another 15, 20 beyond that. The only thing I could see at all was the cl row closest to me. Okay. And again, uh, how, were you, how were you selected? Selected by the uh, Philadelphia Republican Party. And credentialed by them? Yes. Okay, thank you. And we'll have one. Lizette, would you speak for the other group that were not allowed access, which is another category? Not would you mind? Uh, not at all, thank you. Let's see if I can get this down a little bit. I'll before. stand on my toes. Want me to hold you up? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, thanks for being here. I'm Lisette Terragano. I'm a longtime resident of Philadelphia. T is in Thomas, A-R-R-A-G-A-N-O. You're welcome. Um, I am a, a longtime resident of Philadelphia, although not native. And um, quite frankly, I've always been about, um, I'm a retired attorney. Um, and I got really, really hepped up about watching voter freedom, freedom of speech, and being able to say the words Donald Trump without getting pushed in the corner. 
and when I really got excited about being asked to observe ballots was when I felt that my way of life is being put in jeopardy. The American way of life uh, being put down for things I say, who I like, and it's not fair. I'm the child and granddaughter of both Holocaust victims and survivors, and I'm the daughter of a World War II veteran and who fought for and or ran away from horrible, horrible times where people are repressed and sent away. And what I noticed when I was brought in to be a poll watcher, um, I was never brought in actually. I never got past the first identification stage. They kept saying that mine as well as five or six other Republicans, uh, their names hadn't been entered into the system. And after I mean, the first time it happened, the second time it happened, I was had no uh, second thoughts about it being a problem more that somebody failed to finger us into the computer system. But after a while, what I witnessed, and I, I said to Mr. Giuliani before, in a, in a morbid curiosity staring at, I felt insidious fraud going on. I felt that we were kept away from doing our civil duty. That was everybody on both parties should be upset about. This is horrible, we're being restricted, we're being restrained, and I see this nothing as the insidious nature of the Philadelphia and Pennsylvania governments who are keeping us away from doing what we were meant to do. Thank you, thank you. Was that the other, the other one, two, three? Are here with me today. The other, the other three here are also poll watchers who were deprived of their opportunity to even go into the room. Uh, I could have brought, I'm getting a list now to count them, I could have brought about 50 with me, but I didn't do it for two reasons. 50 is too many. Number two, they're afraid. They're afraid of being publicly identified. They're willing to testify in court. They're afraid there'll be repercussions against them because one of the people that did speak on television has already had threats. Uh, Jeremy Mercer, who uh, was in charge, has already given a statement twice, both um, here in Philadelphia, the day after the election, I believe, and then he was interviewed on television. Uh, Jeremy will basically corroborate uh, the statements that were given about the fact that he was there for 21 hours and then again for another couple of hours. He believes about 300,000 ballots went through. He was unable to see any of them. He requested uh, an opportunity to do so numerous times. Then uh, they went to court. They got an order that they could be six feet closer. They were put six, six feet closer and the tables they were observing were put at least six feet further away, or the people moved to tables that were further in the back. Um, the other witnesses who we've interviewed, and we've interviewed about half of the 50, all corroborate to a T exactly what you see here, that they thought they were gonna show up to do an inspection. Some of them had inspected absentee ballots before, where you're shown the ballot. The Republican is shown the ballot. The Democrat is shown the ballot. Neither objects, you put it in. If either objects, you put it aside for discussion later. Nothing like that happened here at all. This is a gross miscarriage of the process that would assure that these ballots are not fraudulent. It's a fraud, an absolute fraud. I mean, you can't just submit these ballots and not have them checked. They're highly suspect ballots, mail-in mail, mail ballots. It's also highly suspect because it's almost mathematically impossible, several people have already testified, to close the lead that Biden closed. When, um, when things closed on Tuesday night, President Trump was ahead by almost 800,000 votes. And it took a couple of days to be able to produce enough ballots to bring it down. Now, could some of those ballots have been manufactured in advance by the Democrat machine of Philadelphia. It wouldn't be the first time they did it. And then exactly why didn't they want the ballots inspected if the, if the ballots are legitimate? It would seem to me, knowing the suspicion that would exist on a political machine like this with the reputation that it has, you would go to the extra extent to be transparent. Instead, they went to an extra extent to be secretive, as did the Democrat Party 
in pretty much the cities they control as a machine like this one. Because although we don't have as many complaints yet, we've got about 12 in Atlanta, we've got about 15 in Detroit, we've got about 20 more in the rest of Michigan. I would say in at least 10 states now, we have complaints almost exactly like this. This will be a statewide case because there are 300,000 ballots equally in question in Pittsburgh with witnesses similar to these witnesses. In some cases, um, in some cases, they actually saw a little bit more that would suggest that the ballots were being tampered with, but I have to wait until they're all fully debriefed. Well, let me, first of all, obviously he's not, he's not going to concede when at least 600,000 ballots are in question. Uh, it's not my job to determine if the ballots are right or not. It's their job. But with a mail-in ballot or an absentee ballot, the, the burden under law is on the party that's proposing it, which is why it has to be inspected. It's not my, uh, how, how, how can I possibly tell you there's fraud or no fraud? The way they conducted themselves because it looks, I can't tell you exactly what's on the ballot. They conducted themselves in a way that suggests that there was fraud. One of the things that does involve fraud is not making it uh, possible for the people who are supposed to inspect to inspect. That's a fraud. That's a fraud on the voters. The voters ins uh, ins uh, uh, ex expect that their inspectors are going to be able to inspect. The voters were defrauded of that right. We will not know if those 600,000 ballots were valid, invalid, or not. Having conducted themselves that way, they certainly present a very strong circumstantial case that the ballots were tampered with. Also, the highly unusual, almost mathematically impossible reduction in the vote in that period of time also raises the question that the ballots were tampered with. So they've done everything they can to yell out to you we were tampering with the ballots without being stupid enough to show it to you. They kept our inspectors away. They kept our inspectors away uniformly. I don't think we're going to find a single Republican that ever got to look at one of those ballots when the law requires that we are allowed to look at them. They did it here, and they did it in Pittsburgh. That can't be a coincidence. How do they figure out in Pittsburgh they should do the same thing that happened here? And they didn't do it in other places. I'm sorry. I'm going to ask... Corey Lewandowski to explain his experience. Well, I appreciate you being here today. Let me just give you one concrete example, not anecdotal, but concrete example of what we believe to be valid voter fraud in the state of Pennsylvania. I draw your attention to an obituary listed for one Denise Ondish in Allegheny County, born 9-10-1946, deceased 10-22-2020. Her application to vote was received on 10-23, the day after she died. It was then mailed by the county back to her on 10-24-2020, two days after she had legally passed away. And the ballot was then received back at the county office on November 2nd, 2020, and when you go to the Secretary of State's website today, it says that she voted in this election, effective November 2nd, 2020, a full nine days after Ms. Ondish of Allegheny County passed away. This is not, excuse me, this is not empirical, this is not anecdotal. This is hard evidence, and if you do your jobs from the media, I'm sure you'll find additional examples. And this will be one of many that we will be filing with the court. Thank you very much. Also, 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 when you, when you say that there's no evidence, the people, standing, the people standing behind me are called witnesses. 
they will eventually, soon hopefully, appear in court and give this testimony because we're going to file a federal lawsuit that will cover here and Pittsburgh, and we will have as many witnesses as the court needs. Right now, it could be as many as 90 witnesses. That's called evidence that there was a uniform deprivation of the right to inspect, which constitutes a fraud on the people of Pennsylvania, constitutes a fraud on all legitimate voters. Any illegitimate vote cancels a legitimate vote. And the burden, the burden of proof as to whether it's a leg legitimate ballot or not, when it's a mail-in ballot, is on the person proposing the ballot because there's no other way to, to justify it. Well, they made it impossible to view those ballots, and there can be only one conclusion as to why you would make it so impossible, because many, many of them were fraudulent. And you don't, you just don't lose leads like that without corruption. And you're in a city in which voter fraud is professional. It's not just amateur. Some places may be amateurs at voter fraud. Philadelphia is a professional place for voter fraud because you have a decrepit Democrat machine that you have had in power for 60 years, and it's the reason why you have voter fraud, it's the reason why you have so much crime, it's the reason why you're leading the country in some categories of crime, because these people are not helping the people of Philadelphia. Their loyalty is to the Democrat Party. Oh, please, please, I can't, I, I'll answer three questions one at a time. I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Wiener? Um, who is a winner or a cheater? Oh, is he a winner or a cheater? Well, that's, that's what we want to find out. We have a right. I mean, here's what I can say about this evidence. This evidence is overpowering in that it suggests we need a very, very detailed hearing. We have to find out exactly how many ballots are implicated, how many ballots were not inspected. The, the estimates I have so far, but we haven't finished this investigation, is there was about 150 to 200,000 ballots here and about 300,000 ballots in Pittsburgh. It may be more, it may be less. Now, that's very serious because the margin of victory after being behind by 800,000 was only about 40,000. And it's a little odd that every vote from Tuesday on was all for the one candidate. There's also a very strange thing that happened, which will be part of our case. At some point during the process, when, when, the, lead, when the lead of President Trump reduced from something like 50,000 to 30,000, at the time it was at 50,000, 94% of the vote had been cast. And when we got to 30,000, it was only 90% of the vote cast. Now, I can get experts to tell you how that happens. That happens because, think about it, you, you increase the denominator. What do you increase the denominator with? New ballots. Nobody was informed of new ballots, unless people were writing them up. This will be a very, very strong case. And I know, I know you won't accept it because of your hateful biases, but let's see if you can try thinking rationally. The poll? Because they don't decide the election. The call for Joe Biden isn't, is it? Who was it called by? All the, oh my goodness, all the networks. Wow! All the networks! We have to forget about the law. Judges don't count. All the networks, all the networks. All the networks thought Biden was going to win by 10%. Gee, what happened? Come on, don't be, don't be ridiculous. Networks don't get to decide elections. Courts do. Of course, courts set aside elections when they're illegal. In this particular case, I don't know if there's enough evidence to set aside the entire election. Certainly not around the country, maybe in Pennsylvania. However, there certainly is enough evidence 
to disqualify a certain number of ballots, the ballots that were not properly inspected should be thrown out. And that number of ballots should be taken out of the count. That could affect the election. Shh. Shh. I can't hear two people at once. I'm sorry. That's a whole new issue. That's a whole new issue that we're just developing. Seems to be a significant number of ballots, and there seems to be a significant number of, I shouldn't say significant. There seem to be three or four very credible witnesses that there was backdating going on, and there are direct witnesses for that, but I'm sure you'll, you'll call that not evidence. Not you, the general, general mob. Sure. Yes. Yes. Sure. Simple. Thank you, sir. I can be a law professor. Uh, the case that we would file, this that many cases are going to be filed. Some big, some small. This is going to be eventually a big case because it, it will go beyond Pennsylvania. But right now, the case is a um, civil rights case. It'll be filed in federal court, I'm sorry. It'll be filed in federal court. You could file it here or Pittsburgh. That'll be the choice of our, of our lawyer, who's looking at it now. Since there seem to be more cases in Pittsburgh than here right now, I would guess it would be filed in Pittsburgh, but it would affect both jurisdictions. And what the case alleges is very simply that President Trump's campaign was denied its right to a fair count, which is a deprivation of civil rights. And if that's the case, the court has a wide range of what are called equitable remedies. Equitable remedies could include depriving that jurisdiction of a certain number of votes, equal to the number of votes that are proved to be not inspected properly. It could be could, could be to set aside an election, but that, I wouldn't, I mean, that could be one of the things we ask for, but I think that if you set aside the votes, you would probably remedy the wrong that was done here. Now, it could turn out as we go beyond Pittsburgh and we go beyond Philadelphia, and we have a little bit of evidence elsewhere in another Democratic part of the state that the same thing was going on, that it might spread to there. Where I do see it spreading, however, is Sometime next week, unless I'm wrong, I think there'll be a similar case in Atlanta where similar things were going on. Republican inspectors showed up. They expected to inspect, right, like they do for absentee ballots, and they were uniformly kept out. They got to see nothing. And remember, Atlanta had to do the same thing you had to do. They had to catch Biden up because on election night he had lost. And he was down by a very good margin with only 85% to go. Uh, something very similar happened in Michigan, Wisconsin. Can't say Arizona. But in almost every state where B President Trump had a lead going into the end of election night, some of the leads looking almost mathematically impossible to undo with the 5%, 10%, 20% of the vote, and almost all of those, this practice was followed. And I'm right now trying to find, do we get to see any ballots that we use for that purpose? If that's the case, then we have a massive nationwide lawsuit. So it could affect more than one state. But, but right now, the one that it definitely affects is the state of Pennsylvania in a very, very big way. But it's not the only infirmity in this state. There are dead people voting. No question about it. We get any number of complaints of that. We have a very serious problem with backdating of ballots, including four witnesses now who are testifying to that. Whether that becomes part of this lawsuit or it's something separate, that isn't developed as fast as this has. One last question.
Well, that's like comparing apples and oranges, isn't it? They're not in charge of Philadelphia. How, how would, I'm, I'm glad they didn't see widespread fraud. That was in Republican counties. I don't think there was fraud in Republican counties. Well, then let them come and tell me that. I haven't found, I haven't found one who's willing to tell me that. Let them give me an affidavit under oath, under, under penalty of perjury. You're telling me these people are lying? Well, you, you, I've, spoken, I've spoken to about 50 people. I have statements from 25. We've spoken to 50. Every single inspector. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't speak to them. Are you the lawyer for the other side, by the way? Well, you should get paid for it. The reality is, the reality is that nobody has come forward, even though I've called the state party, the city party. I've asked, is there anyone that wants to come forward and say that there's anything unusual about the man in charge of this whole process who watched the whole thing? has already come forward and given us a signed statement that no one got a chan chance to inspect. Now, unless this man had a secret opportunity to do it, there was one person in charge of all these people. He was there constantly for both days. Not a single Republican got a chance to view a single ballot. Now, if we got to view 10 or 12, well, then we'll reduce our number from 10, from from 120,000 to 110,000. But you produced this man for me. So far, he hasn't come out of the woodwork. And, well then, oh, well, maybe he, maybe, yeah. Well, if I were the commissioner of this city, I don't think I would admit that I didn't allow people to do this. I mean, <laughs> The last, there was a, last time a Republican played ball with Democrats like that in New Jersey. He went to jail for 10 years. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much.